Well, good evening and welcome to another Wednesday's Word. Good to be able to come to you this evening uh, with God's Word. I believe it'll be an encouragement to you as it was to me uh, as I was studying it. Uh, also, too, I look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Uh, if you didn't get an opportunity to watch the Tuesday video that was sent out from the church, be sure to look for that uh, online and be able to view that. Uh, states a lot of the uh, things, the expectations uh, for when you come uh, to the building. And so be sure to watch that. But today's word is from 2 Corinthians 12, 7 through 10. So if you have your Bibles, uh, if you'd open up there uh, to those few verses, and I'll give you a second to flip there. Uh, this is Paul speaking, and uh, it starts out in verse 7 saying, Because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, for this reason, to keep me from exalting myself, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from exalting myself. What was the reason for the thorn? Well, it states there the reason. The reason was because of the great revelation that was given to him. If you refer back to verse 2 in that same chapter, Paul was given this great experience where he went up to the third heaven and was giving, given great revelation. Now, obviously, if you had experience like that, that'd be, that'd be some great bragging rights. It'd be easy to, uh, to let pride uh, be evident in your life. Uh, if you experience something like that, and Paul did, and he said that this thorn was given to him for that very reason, and it says it twice just in that one verse. Uh, I thought that was unusual. You see the wording, to keep me from exalting myself, to keep me from exalting myself. You know, we've often said that the key to learning is repetition, and so there the scripture mentions it twice just in the same passage that that's why... Uh, and you think, well, what, what was the thorn? Uh, what, what is he referring to the thorn? Well, the scripture doesn't indicate what the thorn is, and theologians have speculated and said it may be this and that. I, I'm not going to spend any time on that because no matter what we mention, it's still speculation because if the scripture for sure uh, wanted us to know, then it would have mentioned it. I believe one reason it's not because if it was mentioned the exact one that his was and ours may be a different thorn, we'd say it's not relative. We're this way, no matter what it is and what we're going through, it, it could be that could be the thorn that he experienced. And so, uh, and you say, well, what is a thorn? Uh, you've heard the old uh, saying, you know, it's a thorn in my flesh. Uh, thorns are, are negative things. You know, uh, it could have been a, a a pain, a physical thing he was going through, discouragement, opposition, a persecution, difficulties, a, a weakness. It could have been all kind of negative things. You know, uh, a lot of bushes have thorns, you know, and that gives a beautiful picture of what we're speaking of here. You know, if you look at this, you can see on this thorn bush, uh, you can see the thorns, how sharp they are. And if you grab one of those while you're out in the uh, garden or you're, you come across a thorn, thorny stick, then those hurt. They cause pain, irritation, agony, difficulty, struggle. Uh, all kind of words to describe what it'll be if you grab one of those thorns. So what a beautiful picture. Uh, I say beautiful. It's an it's a illustration of what this negative situation is that Paul's looking at. He's got a thorn. And we see that that thorn was sent to him uh, through a messenger of Satan. Uh, obviously, God's in control of everything. Satan's just his delivery boy. Uh, the FedEx package, so to speak, that was delivered through the messenger. But it was sent to Paul for that reason, to keep him from being exalted. It was going to be a benefit. Even though it was something negative, it was going to be a benefit in his life. And so we see that that thorn was important for him because pride can take all kind of, uh, or can show up in all kind of ways in our life. You know, uh, a lot of people, you'd ask them, well, are you dealing with pride? And they'd say no. 
but a lot of times we don't recognize the pride in our life. A lot of times it's just we're not really truly dependent on God. We're dependent on ourself, and that's a form of pride. Sometimes we just don't have a teachable spirit. In other words, somebody tries to show us a, an area in our life that needs correction or they show us something in our life that they've seen is, is wrong and we won't receive it. We won't receive the correction or we won't have that teachable spirit. And that's a form of pride. Sometimes maybe the, the devil will tempt us that maybe we're more spiritual than somebody else or we're better than somebody else. And that temptation can come when we're all equal in Christ. You know, also we can, when something's wrong, we, we, we think that uh, our spirituality is greater than it is. You know, uh, God's trying to show us our pride. We won't have anything to do with it. You know, you've heard the old saying, you know, some people are say that they're humble and they're proud of it. Uh, so we need to examine ourselves to say, do we, are we, or are we struggling with a, a form of pride? Is that, is that in our life? because those were just a few of the forms. There's so many ways that pride can and enter our life. And, and sometimes uh, we have to be on guard of it and be able to ask like uh, David did, search me, Lord. Uh, because if we don't ask to search me, Lord, uh, sometimes our own self-evaluation can be wrong. As a teacher, I really didn't understand too much about um, children grading their own tests, you know, Sometimes when we grade our own tests, our own spirituality, a lot of times our score is higher than what it really should be. You know, you may have heard the story about the two ducks and the frog. They were, always, they were enjoying life in this great pond until there was a drought and the pond dried up to just mud. Well, the ducks, they could easily fly to a new pond. Oh, but the frog, he was stuck there. So the frog had a great idea. He went and found him a stick and put one end of the stick in the one duck's mouth and put the other end of the stick in the other duck's mouth. And then he grabbed a hold with his mouth in the middle of the stick. And then the ducks flew off up in the air, hundreds of feet up in the air, flying to the new pond. Oh, what a great idea. And as they were flying that high up, they were passing over a farmer's house. And that farmer looked up and he thought, man, what an amazing idea. Look at that frog. I wonder who came up with that great idea. Well, the frog couldn't help it and opened his mouth and said, I did. You know, the scripture says that pride cometh before a fall. Oh, and that frog, he had a long fall down till the splat happened. And that's how pride is. It, it comes before a fall. It's things that, that bring us down. We think it's going to help us. The temptation from Satan is to keep that pride, to keep that dependence, to keep that attitude that I can do it. I don't need help and I don't need anybody to show me or correct me. And, and that always leads to destruction, just like in the frog's life. And then we see Paul's first response to this. In verse 8, it says, Concerning this, I implored the Lord three times that it might leave me. What did he do? He prayed earnestly for the Lord to get rid of whatever this thorn was. And that's what we would do. I mean, we don't want all these, any of this negative or these weaknesses or difficulties or opposition or uh, we pray uh, that the Lord would get rid of that in our life. That's the uh, response for all of us. And he did this three times. I don't know what the gap in time was between each time, but it says here that he did it three times. And he implored, he was doing this diligently for the Lord to to get rid of this. You ever prayed for something in particular and you felt like the Lord didn't answer, but maybe the answer was just no. That whatever that was, or maybe even right now is in your life, that it has to stay there for a while, uh, at least for a period of time, uh, but it's, it's still in your life, that difficulty. And, and maybe like Paul, you've prayed and prayed and prayed, but Maybe for some reason the Lord has allowed it to stay for maybe the same reason we're going to see in this passage that it stayed in Paul's life. You know, we see that Paul goes on to find the answer uh, for the situation in verse 9. It says, And he said to me, My grace 
is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, Paul said, I would rather boast about my weakness so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. What was the answer? Well, God told him, my grace is sufficient. It's enough to get you through. It's enough to walk you through this difficulty. It's enough to hold you up. It, it's sufficient. It's all you need. It's all the power you need. It's all the grace you need. And it's perfected in his weakness. And then for Paul to say, look, I'd rather boast, brag about my weakness. Why? So that the power of Christ may dwell in me. My friend, don't you want the power of Christ to dwell in you? you say, well, I've got all these difficulties and I've got all these weaknesses, but Paul said, I'd rather boast in them, brag about them. Why? So that the power of Christ can dwell in me. You know, usually we want to, our temptations to boast about our strengths, but here he's boasting about it, weakness. It's almost as if to say, you know, my weaknesses are more than your weaknesses or my weaknesses are greater than your weaknesses. You know, almost a bragging right to be able to say, I'm glad about these weaknesses because I'm going to see the power of Christ demonstrated in my life through his grace. Nothing I've earned, nothing I deserve, but he's going to give me the sufficient grace and I can brag in what he does and not what I can't and not in what I can do. And we can see that power. You know, we see it, especially guys, when it comes to going to the doctor. You know, we hold off going to the doctor, hold off going to the doctor. You know, our wives are telling us, you need to go, you need to go, and we take over the counter. Or we just bear it and bear it until we can't bear it anymore. And then we finally say, okay, I'm going. And we go to the doctor, and we feel so bad we need the help so bad that, that we go and then we do exactly what he tells us to do and we go get the prescription from a pharmacist that's full of chemicals that could be deadly but they're mixed in the right way with the right ingredients at the right amount and given instructions on how to take them, when to take them and how much and we do that. Why? So we can get to feel better because we've come to the point of our weakness that we had to submit. You know, we shouldn't reach that point with the Lord. We should rely on him all the time, be dependent on, on his diagnosis and be able to go to him for the help we need and, and be able to get the prescription and direction and guidance, even when it sounds like something that we don't want to hear. We need to be able to do it and respond to it. And what leads us to do that? The sickness is what led us to the doctor, and maybe the thorn is what led us to be more dependent more obedient, more committed to the Lord and his word and obedience and dependence on him because that's what he wants us to be dependent on him. And then in, in verse 10, he says, Therefore, I am well content. Now he's got content with weakness, with insults, with distresses, with persecutions, with difficulties, for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Wow. He says, man, I'm content with it now. I, he, he was able to see that even with his weaknesses and all these difficulties, he knew that when he was weak, because of God's grace, he would be made strong. You know, we always think about what we can do for the Lord. You know, a lot of people said, I can't. Well, I can't either but he can through his grace. You know, even part of, 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 I believe, a thorn in my life was what led me in, in one part uh, to surrender becoming a pastor. You know, because we've got to see things in our life that God's doing for a greater cause. And even today, you may be saying, man, some, I've got too many weaknesses. I've got too many difficulties. Hey, through God's grace, God can use you and minister through you and you can be a blessing to others. Why? Because of his grace. Uh, so Paul's saying, hey, 
I'm content with my weaknesses. Matter of fact, my weaknesses in my weakness, I'm strong because I, he saw the grace of God give him the strength to endure whatever that thorn was in his life. You may have heard the story about the, the man that saw the cocoon laying on the windowsill right outside his office. And he saw that cocoon. He knew that that, uh, that caterpillar was in there trying to break free. And he saw the crack, the small crack in the cocoon. And he just saw whatever was in there struggling. And he thought, man, I feel so bad. I'm going to try to help him out. And so he opened up the window and and broke open that cocoon and there was that caterpillar and it was just lifeless and, and the wings had started to sprout to be a butterfly but it, it, it couldn't do anything, it couldn't fly and it just laid there. Later on he realized the reason that he shouldn't have disturbed it is because that pressure, that pushing, that anxiety, that difficulty that's required for that caterpillar to push in that cocoon pushes the life-giving blood and the nutrients into those wings so that when it's time, when the struggle is, is enough for it to break that cocoon on its own, then it's able to have those life-giving juices into its wings and is able to break free of that and fly from being a caterpillar to a butterfly. It was the struggle that made it all possible. Sometimes the Lord allow us to go through struggles and difficulties, thorns, so to speak, and they end up being something great. You know what's on the end of a lot of those thorn bushes is a beautiful rose. At the end of the thorns, something has sprouted, something beautiful. You never thought that, that the end of a thorny bush could be such a beautiful rose. One benefit's going to be I had to buy six of these to make the illustration so Rebecca's going to get some roses this evening and that'll be a blessing too because it's such a reminder that no matter what difficulty we go in God can make the rose even his crown of thorns that crown of thorns wasn't the end that crown of thorns that crown of thorns uh, led to eventually his sacrifice ultimate sacrifice of death on the cross to pay our sins and resurrect and give us new life in Christ. And so that crown of thorns is something that we see sprouted into something great and beneficial for us that we benefit from even today. Satan, his delivery force was to bring the thorn, but God brought the grace. May God's grace be yours today and be experienced in a great way. Let's pray. Father, we pray that we would experience your grace and your mercy through whatever difficulties we go through, whatever thorns that we experience, we'd experience your grace because it is sufficient and it's amazing. In Jesus' name, amen. We look forward to seeing you uh, Sunday. And again, as mentioned earlier, if you didn't get a chance to watch Tuesday's uh, video, be sure to tune in on that. Uh, it's going to be a great day in the Lord. And just keep uh, experiencing his grace. As you may have heard, it is amazing. And we experience it day by day. May you experience God's grace today. Uh, love you, praying for you. Look forward to seeing you. God bless.